the shrimp. Well, hey there, Mission Control. It has been a few days of just nonstop welding, but I am happy to share with you that I just finished welding the last frame pieces. Single decker tower frame is complete. Double decker tower frame is complete. Potato tower frame is complete. And the corn tower frame is complete. Uh, they, there are still touch up and things that need to be fixed, but all the major welding is completed. All of my tube stock is now officially used up and is now vertical. I'm really excited about it. I'm really tired too. And it's been really hot. That hot temperature came back. Now remember the last video I was talking about being cold? Well, yeah, it switched on us. It went back to 100 degree days. So it's been a little sweaty out here to say the least. Uh, I don't have any cool action shots to show you this time and I didn't do a video yesterday recording because it's the same thing I've been doing. So I just wanted to kind of share with you a quick overview of what we got going on here, the towers, how they're gonna work and what work I have remaining. So this is a single decker tower. These are all modular units, right? They consist of a base at the very bottom, an optional tank, uh, your, a grow deck. There's actually spacers in here to create your first grow deck and then you have your light deck here. And we're gonna be using this go around uh, much more energy efficient LEDs than the ones that we had before. Uh, so we'll see how those do. And I'm also going full spectrum this time. I'm not gonna do the uh, dedicated spectrum. Now that's an academic argument. Some of you may feel very strongly one way, some feel very strongly the other. I've already done the red and uh, blue lights with UV. Now I'm gonna do full spectrum light and see how that performs this go around. The good news is that whatever people want to do with these towers because uh, these are intended to be consumer products they could choose their lights and interchange them so uh, this is a single decker tower in this one we're going to try to grow stuff like carrots uh, garlic um, usually you wouldn't be growing this type of stuff in aquaponics but because we're using aeroponics and these beds are specially designed to support aeroponics uh, we should be able to grow root vegetables so this one's going to be really exciting to see that come together now you've already seen this one if you've been following along, but this is our corn or hemp tower. You could also do tomatoes on this. Uh, this one consists of a base and then immediately goes to a grow deck demonstrating the modularity. You don't have to have a fish tank, uh, but if I wanted to add a fish tank, all I have to do is lift the grow deck out and then actually, uh, oh, and the light, this one, this is the uh, light mount for this one. It's very large, same idea, four legs, light mounts up top. Um, pull the light mount off, pull the grow deck off, put a fish tank in, grow deck back on, and you can reconfigure it. And that's the same with all these folks. These ones are all kind of tight uh, because of the, me and not being a great welder and things that I need to fix, uh, which is what I'll do off camera. I gotta take these back apart again. I gotta do some grinding, put some more tolerance in, a little more gap so things are easier to move around. Some of these probably need a hydraulic jack to get apart. Uh, because they're a little bend here, you know, things that, imperfections, you know, uh, Jeffisms, real Martian truth uh, is gonna come out. Uh, they're not perfect, just like me. So uh, we gotta fix those, but the corn tower is another one I'm really excited about. You might think it's not tall enough and you would be wrong. Um, we actually in our garden uh, have corn that grows right about here and it's getting some really nice big ears on it. So you don't have to have, you know, eight feet of corn grow area to get good corn. Uh, I think you will get more off of it, obviously, uh, but you don't have to have that really high area like what you'd see in some corn fields back in the Midwest in the United States. Uh, so there's the towers. All the tubing is in, all the tubing is welded. Uh, all the framing is now welded. Uh, the next stop is we've got to take these all apart, clean up the issues, and then we'll actually start uh, welding the tanks. Now here's the game plan with the tanks. You know, I tried to go out and get the pros to do it and they came back with no, the pros that do stainless steel tank welding came back and said no. Literally a company that does nothing but stainless steel tank welding said, Metal's too thin, we can't guarantee it's gonna be watertight, so we're not gonna do it. Uh, which is my problem. I, I can weld it, but it's not guaranteed to be watertight. So here's what we're gonna do. These grow decks, you know, here, here, these different things, they don't have to hold water. They have to direct and guide water. So I am going to use tack welding uh, 
and get everything put together mechanically. And then I'm going to be using aquarium sealant and sealing everything. We're gonna do the same thing for the fish tanks. We're gonna see how that works. Uh, fish tanks do have to hold water uh, without any leakages, of course. Everything can't leak. You know, we can't have leaks anywhere, but enough sealant will take care of that problem. Uh, it's food grade sealant, so it shouldn't leak any BPAs or plastics into what we're doing. And again, this is all prototyping. We do not wanna to go to market with stainless steel. That is not our desirement. Though they are a cool early adopter test program, uh, <laughs> so it's kind of like the Mark I Iron Man suit, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty rigid. It's not as sexy as what he did in the end. Um, anyway, so my plan again is to tack weld everything, then use the sealant to guarantee watertight. And that sealant holds pressure. So we should be able to have success with the, uh, with the aquariums, with the fish tanks. So. Some of you have asked about the shrimp, by the way. So I wanna like, take you over there today, show you what's happening with the grow boxes and uh, see how big those shrimp are getting. All right, to the back we go. Oh, this welder is awesome. Plasma cutter has been great. The plasma table has been great. Ah, I've cut everything. You'll notice there's no more tube on the floor, just sheet metal. And here we go. Ooh, that's really bright. Look at this, check it out. The strawberry has started to sprout more. There's a sprout there and there's another sprout way down in there. Hard to see. The basil's doing great and it's official. Need to replant that. Here we go. The shrimp. There they are. They're getting big. Okay, up there. I think this is the biggest one right there. Tell you what, I really love this new shop. Love my fridge, air conditioner, the heat pump. I got, that's the uh, dehumidifier from Hab One, one of them that's in here. We get about two and a half gallons of water out every day. And we do that for the filament so we can keep it in here. Uh, the fridge is great though. We have great well water but really ice cold well water is fantastic. Drank two of these already and uh, got to stay hydrated. I started working out again. I really honestly feel like I'm starting to get my feet back underneath of me, kind of back where I was at pre-COVID, uh, where it, you knew what needed to be done and it was work. And uh, I was working out, I was feeling good. Uh, my attitude was good, you know, things were good. And then COVID hit and the world changed. And uh, ever since then, until recently, I've really felt like I didn't have my feet underneath me and things were just crazy. Really feel like feet are starting to get back underneath me again, readjusted to the new world order. And here we are and the work is here and we know what needs to get done. So I feel, I'm feel that's a long way of saying I'm feeling better and the reason why I'm feeling better. So <sighs> it's cool seeing this stuff come together. Things are gonna slow down now because we've got to do that sheet metal We'll see how that goes. I think the big brown bus was supposed to deliver uh, the sealant today, but because of COVID, everything takes way longer. Uh, so hopefully, I ordered it over a week ago. Hopefully it'll be here today or tomorrow because we are ready to uh, start getting things uh, going. Speaking of ready, we gotta get the girls over. Uh, Daisy and Darla are Black Angus. Uh, we gotta get them over, get them AI'd and uh, that's artificially inseminated, not, or not give them artificial intelligence. I always get that. Uh, in between two worlds, here I am, and both have an acronym AI. So we gotta get them over. Tomorrow I gotta take them, or I gotta take the trailer to the dump, get it emptied out, and then clean it out for the girls, load them up on Thursday morning, and get them over. Uh, they'll be over there for about a week and a half. Come back, and with your prayers, with our prayers, and God's grace, and. And Mercy will have uh, pregnant cows, and uh, nine months hence, we will have uh, two calves if everything goes well. So pray for us on that. Thanks so much, everybody, for following along. Quick update where we're at. Sorry, there's not great action shots, but you could have caught me dancing earlier to all the oldies rock party music I was listening to on Pandora. Great channel, by the way. Thanks again for following along. Don't forget you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. If you really like what we're doing and you want to be a part of it, we could always use your help on Patreon. 
for the cost of less than a candy bar per month, uh, it goes a long way towards helping us. So thank you to all the patrons who have been with us for so long and the brand new ones. We really appreciate your support. Everybody, this is The Real Martian, out.